<laughs> 4XL for all the people stuffing their faces with trick rounds. I don't know if we need 4X, man. <laughs> that's, that's pretty crazy. Oh, uh, man. What are we going to discuss tonight? Uh, we got a YouTube TV story. We got an ACP follow-up. I wanted to give you guys that. Uh, I forget the name of the gentleman who supported us with a, a super chat last week on, and he had some kind of like ACP concerns and comments. Um, yeah, B, I'll try, man. I'll try. You know how much stuff costs these days. Uh, so, anyways, I wanted to get the the ACP update, what the carriers are doing. Uh, there's a follow up to the broadband labels. You guys know we covered that on the previous show. We got a little bit of an uh, amendment to that. And then uh, there's a fiber upgrade that's ongoing. It's probably going to start scaling, you know, kind of like big scale. I know a lot of people out there are in frontier country, so we've got this uh, technical issue that's going on. So we'll cover that. That's a bit of a customer need to know kind of deal. Comcast Now, some of you may not know what it is. I really don't even know what it is. Uh, we'll learn about it tonight. And then to kind of round out the show, we'll talk about 5G DSS and it's being sunset. I guess we don't need it anymore. We'll talk about why we don't need it anymore and why we're glad it's going to be going. Uh, AT&T having some problems at Sacramento International Airport. I had no idea this was going on. Came across my Google News feed and I'll get you guys in the know on that news. Uh, and actually an update to the AT&T data breach situation. I've been pinched on this. Uh, I, I'm, I'm one of the people impacted by this. I know a lot of people are too. And this is why I always preface, you never know what's happening with a data breach until way after. Like there's like the initial shock, then there's like the contact, and then you never know. It, it may impact you later. You know, maybe, maybe AT&T doesn't know the extent of which it's going to impact customers. Well, now we know, and it's a lot of people. It's over 71 million people. Uh, Verizon's got a new bundle. It's actually an old bundle that they're turning new bundle. Uh, T-Mobile and Verizon with the SIM swap thing. We'll kind of round that news out. And then uh, T-Mobile has got a big deal with Delta. And uh, they are now officially the preferred mobility partner of the company and the airline. So we'll talk about that on today's show. All right. Good stuff. <laughs> P says 20 is too cheap. I'm Hey, man. Look. I don't need to make a lot of money on those t-shirts. I just don't want to come out of pocket. Like, if you guys are willing to pay for it, I'll try to keep it as close to cost as possible. I just want you guys to have fun with it and you guys to like those shirts and be proud to wear them. Be a proud SMT supporter, you know what I mean? And, and I'm good with it, you know? <laughs> All right, guys. First story. Let me get this uh, screen share going here. All right, first story is a quick one on cord cutting. YouTube TV, they are winning. They are the name when it comes to live TV, and it looks like that's going to be trending the case moving forward. Um, shout out to Southwest Ohio Speed Test. Came in with the super chat, broke the seal. Salute to you. Thank you, man. Literally a block away, all the houses are getting fiber. Where have I heard this story before? It's from a provider called Alta. Hopefully they have plans to bring it over to our block. Yeah, I hope for your sake too. I don't know who your providers are. Southwest House Speed Testing. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm sure you could use fiber. Maybe you're using fixed wireless. Maybe you're on DSL. Maybe you're on a crappy cable operator. Fiber would be a welcome site for you, man. So hoping that comes your way. And when it does come your way, definitely let us know so we could celebrate, man. We'll do like streamers and 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 you know sound effects and stuff when you get it it's a game changer i don't think people realize it man when you have fiber it's like just one of those things like oh you're happy and you got it and your internet's always up and running and it's great and it's fast but when somebody doesn't have it and they're dealing with all these crappy old you know cable networks and dsl it sucks you know and fixed wireless is cool there's nothing wrong with it but it's not fiber we know that so we're rooting for you, Southwest Ohio Speed Testing. We want you to get the fiber. We'll be excited when you do get it. And uh, thank you again for always being such a huge supporter of us, man. You've been riding with us for a while, so salute to you, man. Thank you. All right. 
Let's get back to this YouTube TV thing. They're expected to add 1.5 million subs per year and reach 12.4 million subs by the end of 26. That's according to Moffat Nathanson. That's their predictions. This will pull uh, push YouTube TV's base past both Comcast and Charter, who are the biggest operators in the country for telco, and they got the reach. Uh, so Virtual Multi-Channel Video Program Distributor, or VMVPD, launching in February of 2017. My goodness, YouTube TV has been around for like seven years, and they're going to be the number one pay TV service by subscribers at some point in 2026, according to forecasts. YouTube TV currently has 8 million paid and free subscribers. And it says here that 20% of all YouTube TV subs are on seven day free or extended free trials at times. That's one in five. <laughs> that is a lot. All right. It says here YouTube TV's ongoing growth amid the ongoing decline of traditional US pay TV providers will pull it ahead of the pack in the coming years. YouTube TV only trails Comcast and Charter, which each have 14.1 million pay TV subs. So their pay TV subs are decreasing. They're going down. Meanwhile, YouTube TV's uh, you know, subscriber counts continue to increase, and they're ascending, and that's probably going to be the case moving forward. So add 1.5 million subs per year. That's the expectation. So YouTube TV should be well over 12 million subs by the end of 26. Um, so here's, here's what this image looks like. And let's see if this looks better, if we can blow it up and get rid of me. All right. We got pay TV subscribers by provider. You see the big players, Comcast charter. And then you also have, you know, the dishes of the world, direct TV who have kind of been the incumbents for TV. And then you got your like digital players, the streaming apps, YouTube TV and red, and then Hulu live. So let's check it out. Right. If you guys take a look here at YouTube TV on the red line, you see from its launch, it has been on a rampage. It is the fastest growing live TV platform in the in the world or country or however they measure this. Uh, and it's not even close. You're looking at them crossing over 9 million subs at some point in 25 early, right? Maybe the end of 2024. So that could be happening soon. And then... You're looking at, yeah, definitely over 12 by 2026. Hulu did most of its growth already, it looks like. And then you got, you know, just a slow, steady increase of subscribers over time. You see Comcast decreasing. You see DirecTV decreasing. They're all going down. It's really YouTube TV to the highest order. And then it's um a little bit of Hulu Live. But that's pretty much it, right? That, that's that's. That's pretty much the story. It's those providers. So um, YouTube TV's financials, I don't know what that looks like per se, but $6 billion in revenues in 2023. That's up almost $1 billion. Uh, they're going to hit $11 billion by 2026. So they're going to almost double the revenues over the course of a three-year time span. So they're making money. Uh, they have been raising prices. I can tell you guys I'm a YouTube TV customer. And I've been paying for his services, and they've probably raised pricing on me, I think, twice in the last three years. Maybe three times in the last four years. They didn't go up for a while, and then I think what ends up happening is sometimes with these carriage deals, these specific channels get a little bit more expensive. Um, so I don't know how profitable they are. I know they just got the NFL Sunday ticket package. That's an expensive purchase. That is an expensive content to offer. So they're going to be looking to recoup some of that money. That is a nice feature though, right? Like that, the biggest sport in the United States is American football and it's not even close. Having that, I think is going to be huge for them. It's going to get people on their platform and, you know, they can charge a premium for that service because people love their NFL teams. And if they want to watch, like, let's say they're out of market, you know, they moved out of their hometown but they want to continue to watch that team. Like you can do it with that platform. Uh, shout out to Mr. Ice with the 199 Super Chat. He said, news on the Verizon outage in Arizona Tuesday morning. I didn't hear anything about it, but um, if I, I, I mean, I can look for the story for you and, and try to 
check it out i mean i let me see here you said it was an arizona outage yeah i haven't heard of anything uh what is it phoenix according to down detector oh it was two days ago all right so i'll tell you what we'll do mr ice i'll go ahead and line it up and and we'll cover it you know kind of at the end of the show only because i got these other things i want to get to so i don't want to derail the show i want to respect kind of the schedule that we have and the plan but i will get it for you man so thank you uh kenneth Kenneth, I think I think you super chatted last week on the ACP thing. Uh, thanks for the super chat tonight. He said, "Any X's from T-Mobile and ACP?" Uh, not that I know from T-Mobile, but I do have some ACP news that we're gonna cover here on tonight's show, for sure. Uh, Max says it went from fifty to sixty-five to seventy-three dollars. Then it went up again recently after seventy-three. I think that's that's how I remember it. I think when I first signed up for YouTube TV, it was like 50 something. And then it went up. Um, and I think the, the more expensive channels are like ESPN and MTV and those channels. And I'll be honest with you, man, I wouldn't mind losing them and then paying like $20 less. I wouldn't mind straight up. All right. Be on the lookout for YouTube TV to become the biggest TV, live TV platform. It's going to be them. All right, good stuff. Let's get to that ACP story, shall we? All right, ACP reality sets in. Providers tout low-cost alternatives. Time to start thinking of a plan in which we no longer have the bucks supporting the ACP program. All right, so let's take a look at these elements here. All right, as the ACP program gets set to end next month, three internet providers touted alternative low-cost offerings this week, including some available only to low-income households. The ACP program paid up to $30 a month toward the cost of broadband service for qualifying households, but is set to run out of funding next month unless Congress takes action to refund it. That's not happening. There will be no funding. Although we might see a miracle, you never know. <laughs> Miracles happen from time to time. During the 29-month existence of the program, numerous providers have offered the $30 low-income customer subsidy. Basically makes entry-level plans free for folks that have the qualifications, but no longer free. Customers do have the option of getting a partial discount through the Lifeline program, a separate low-income program that is funded through the Universal Service Fund program. So that's good news. If you guys still need some kind of support, you can possibly qualify for a discount through Lifeline. That might be something worth your consideration. I know that a lot of people throughout the country, some of them have TDS, which, um, I mean, they're, they're a pretty big regional provider of wireline services. They're going to continue offering their low-cost low cost services up to 200 megabits per second symmetrical where it's available the service price that 30 bucks a month does include the wi-fi gear so that's good uh so they're they've got some support there for folks at&t and comcast will continue to offer low cost entry level low income plans verizon is doing the low cost Verizon forward program which i made a video about it. i'm not sure if i dropped it yet maybe i already did i so many videos uh, but they're gonna offer you know, service plans as low as $20 a month for new and existing customers. So that would be, depending on what's available in your area, it could be Verizon Fios, could be the 5G home, could be the LTE home. Just depends on what's available at your address. Maybe more reason to consider Verizon as your provider. And they're able to do this, uh, I, I believe, up to six months. Uh, some people might even qualify for zero cost for six months. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, so basically, February, or excuse me, um, the ACP program ends this month uh, in May is going to be down to like $14 in support. But after that, it's over. So, you know, whether it's like straight talk and the track phone brands or, you know, whatever, you know, Verizon is going to support those up until that point through ACP. And then, you know, they're going to be focusing on trying to go that Verizon forward route. Uh, T-Mobile has said that existing customers that use the ACP benefit 
with Assurance Wireless will keep their service through August 2024 without any changes to their price or plan. So that's good by T-Mobile to do that. They're basically saying, we don't want to disconnect you. We don't want to see anything you know, happen to you as a customer. We don't want you to leave. So we're just going to continue to support you guys through that. Uh, it's going to cover ACP discounts for customers on Metro through June, after which those customers will get a monthly discount of $15 through August. So that's pretty cool, right? We're, we're seeing the carriers responding to the deal. And the deal here is that the funding is going to be hard to come by, and then it's going to be basically cut off. Uh, T-Mobile highlighted some of the low-cost prepaid plans, including T-Mobile prepaid data plans that start at $10 a month for two gigs of data, and the Connect by T-Mobile, which offers limited talk and text with five gigs of 5G data for $15 a month. So those are some options to keep people connected as well if uh, qualifications are no longer a thing. I told you guys, like... You know, we're, we're tough on carriers, but there are times where they do the right thing. I think this is one of the instances where they are doing the right thing. They don't want to disconnect people. They don't want people to not have their home broadband or their wireless service, right? And they're keeping them on. So we're really happy about that. Kenneth with another super chat, man. Thanks, Kenneth. It's really nice of you. Thank you. What do you guys, what do you guys on Assurance need to do? I don't think anything. I think Assurance is still covered, at least according to this article. So what I'm going to do for you, um, Kenneth, is I'm going to guide you to the telecompetitor paper here, this article. Uh, there should be some links here within the article that can get you to each of the providers. And T-Mobile is the one that works through Assurance, right? So that's probably what you want to check out. Uh, and just check out the terms. I think they're going to continue to support it and discount the the services so you're covered man thank you appreciate all that you do it's really nice man supporting us that way all right broadband labels now required for larger isps you guys have seen these labels we covered this on last week's show all right so now larger internet providers those with a hundred thousand subs or more now required to meet previously established broadband label requirements april 10th was the deadline for those providers Smaller providers have an additional six months to comply. To me, it just means like they have to construct something, you know, that, that looks like that label. There's probably like a template, a digital template, and you just have to type in, you know, what goes in there. It's also possible that the carriers have some upgrading of their networks to do in order to meet broadband requirements and definitions. That might be part of this. <laughs> the FCC requires all broadband services to have labels following a specific format to be in place at the point of sale for standalone consumer services. The goal is to make it easier for customers to compare plans from one private provider to another. So this is going to be the golden goose of the FCC. This is the best thing they've done this year. <laughs> broadband labels. All right. Uh, this is all part of the bipartisan infrastructure law directed the FCC to require the labels with information about broadband services. All right, cool. So big ISPs, 100,000 customers or more, now have to show the following things on their labels. The price, the introductory rate, right? And and whatever the term is. So if it's going to be for a year, if it's going to be two years, whatever, they got to put that in there. Data allowances, right? So that's probably going to be like the speed, and how much data you can use, whether it's unlimited or whether there's some kind of a restriction. And then available discounts, service bundles, privacy policies, all those things have to be put on there as well. All right, so the only thing that's really left is going to be the smaller providers. They have until October to meet the requirement and produce broadband labels like these. So they got some time, but they're going to have to get on board too. All right. Let's go to, you know, let's skip this story for now. Only because I feel like we could probably cover that another day. We could focus on this next thing. All right. This one. I saw this one. This was another one that showed up on my Google News feed. And I know some of you might have Frontier. All right. Frontier is warning of, quote, technical issues. I don't know what the hell that means. What are technical issues? What does that mean? Does that mean there's like infrastructure problems? Is there 
networking related issues? Is it a systems issue? What the hell does that even mean? Technical issues. Uh, so Frontier Communications has reached out on different platforms to let people know, impacted customers, that the company is experiencing technical issues on their internal support platforms. Uh, no specific details seem to be offered just from the website, the homepage for the company. We're experiencing technical issues with our internal support platforms. Platforms are residential and business networks not affected by the issue. In the meantime, please call for assistance. So there's nothing wrong with the network. Home internet connections, business internet connections, all that seems to be fine and unaffected. So this is something else. Frontier reps did not reply to emails and phone calls from Light Reading, who conducted this inquiry. Companies alerting customers about the issue on social media. I don't know if they have a Twitter or X page or if they got Facebook, uh, but they got something. It says, we're experiencing technical issues and working quickly to resolve the issue as quickly as possible. We apologize for the inconvenience. Hope to be back up and running soon. Okay. So what do you do? Is this like the customer care through the website or what? Users reports indicate problems at Frontier according to Down Detector. What? Down Detector's got it. I thought it wasn't a network issue. Uh, internal support platforms have been down since Tuesday, April 16th. It's Thursday, April 18th at the time of this broadcast. The company hasn't shared a root cause of, uh, at this time of the report being submitted. So people are speculating internal issues, cyber attack, ransomware. We don't know. All that is speculation. Uh, we do know that AT&T had some pretty crappy issues recently. So, I mean, if AT&T can get stung up, then why the hell couldn't Frontier, you know? Uh, I guess I guess there were also some at and or some uh, 911 outages as well. I don't know, man. They mentioned the Dish Network cybersecurity incident from early in the year. Last year, whatever. If you're a Frontier customer and you need customer care, you might just have to call them. And who knows, maybe you can't, like, maybe you can't get through. I don't know. Oh, snap. Speed Test Channel says internal and technical issues equals ransomware. Could be, man. Yeah. Could be. TJ says AT&T has been so slow lately, except for tonight. Just ran a speed test outside the restaurant in Covington, LA. That's pretty fast speeds. What up, Ricky? What up, Maine? <laughs> All right, so Frontier's having issues. All right, now for what I call like the meat and potatoes of the show. We're getting into some of the industry stuff here. All right, let me get you guys a little bit of alignment here. Comcast Now brings prepaid to internet and streaming TV as well as mobile. Okay, prepaid. Uh, you know, more and more people might be looking into prepaid. Probably more than they probably would have been in years past, but maybe prepaid is the move. Uh, who's got the story for us? Carl Weinschenk. All right, Comcast has a new Now brand. Brings the prepaid concept to internet access and streaming TV, in addition to offering mobile phone services and hotspot access. The brand consists of Now Internet, Now Mobile, Now TV, Now Wi-Fi Pass, leveraging the Xfinity network and 5G mobile services. The Now brand features all-in pricing with no contracts or credit checks. Sign up, pausing, and canceling service are available online at any time. I really like this. Okay, so they've got the mobile, they've got the TV, and then the Wi-Fi. And of course, 5G mobile networking because they have the Verizon access. All in pricing. So that means all the taxes and fees, the explosive nature that we know cable for, that might all be kind of removed from this. Initial customer trials of Now Internet and Now Mobile are ongoing in Hartford, New Haven, Houston, Miami. The two services will be rolled out across Comcast's entire footprint during the coming weeks. Now TV and now Wi-Fi Pass are available across the company's footprint 
now. Now. All right, so that's its new brand. It's an alternative to the ACP, which is winding down. The company is positioning the new brand as a better price alternative to fixed wireless access, which is making significant gains. This apparently is shots fired at T-Mobile home internet and Verizon's 5G home internet. Here are the details. We got the deets. All right, this is good. Hopefully we get all the pricing information and then the plans. All right, so now internet prepaid, you have two options. 100 megabits for 30 bucks a month, 200 megabits per second for 45 a month. Both include unlimited data and Xfinity Gateway. What's the uplink? They didn't tell us. Okay, that's uh, that's kind of unfortunate. All right, now mobile will provide unlimited 5G data, talk and text for $25 per line, and can access more than 23 million Xfinity hotspots. All right, so what we got to find out is the unlimited 5G data is that like 20 gigs of high speed, and then it's down to like one megabit per second. I'd like to know. Now TV streaming for Xfinity Internet customers includes live and on-demand programming, 40 networks, more than two dozen integrated free advertising supported streaming channels, Peacock Premium for $20 per month. And then you have the Now Wi-Fi Pass providing unlimited access to more than 23 million Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspots for $20 per month. Max says Xfinity prepaid offers 200 down and 10 up. And you get an old refurbished router. So wheat. The pricing is good. The plans, like in terms of like the speeds and stuff, there's nothing, you know, neck breaking about those, but the pricing, right? $30 a month for internet, $25 a month for a line. So let's add that up, right? 30 and 25 puts you at $55 for a line of wireless service and a home broadband option on a wireline network. That's pretty damn cheap. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna get some business, man. And this is prepaid. So you can sign up as Tony Stark. You could, uh, you could sign up as, uh, you know, OJ Simpson. Rest in peace to, to Juice. It's pretty good pricing, man. The consumer is going to be happy with this, right? But here's the thing. They're doing this as like a response to the ACP funding issue. This will keep people connected. But if they like start growing on this, well then like, what's all this about margins? What's all this about ARPU? What's all this about being more profitable? It's pretty disingenuous. But I, you know what I think it it tells us, guys? This tells us that 5G home internet from Verizon, 5G home internet from T-Mobile is really bothering Comcast. Really is. So they're responding by making their plans cheaper. Their home internet plans and their wireless plans. And this is probably why they had to renegotiate, you know, the, the wireless, you know, network access from Verizon. They had, they had to get a better price because they knew they had to go lower in order to keep customers from leaving them. You know. I know, I know, Los. No more Tropicana, man. The juice was flowing, bro. The juice is loose. It's an interesting offer from Comcast. It's it's real good pricing. You know, it's not going to blow your socks off with the speed, but it's it's plenty good. I mean, if I just wanted to spend 55 bucks. That's a good way to spend 55 bucks. All right, guys. This one's going to be good. Get me out of the thing here. The quiet sunset of 5G dynamic spectrum sharing. All right. Dynamic spectrum sharing, or DSS. 
once a hotly debated topic amongst AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. Now, however, the technology appears to have been quickly retired in the U.S. All right, so I remember this. I remember when DSS was like a hot topic and people were arguing about it. I'll tell you what DSS was, right? DSS was always going to be like a bridge. DSS was always going to be this necessary evil for Verizon and AT&T to have a 5G icon. It was never going to be something that was going to be game-changing and innovative and technology advancing features it just wasn't going to be that it was literally for AT&T and Verizon to have a 5G icon on your phone so you didn't feel left out because the person next to you who had a T-Mobile phone had a 5G icon too <laughs> I want you guys to think about when 5G networks first launched back in like 2019 I know crazy five years ago T-Mobile's low band 5G network was so freaking slow, it was like useless to be on it. You were better off disabling 5G because it was probably a 5 or a 10 megahertz channel of N71. They didn't have new spectrum. You didn't have additional bandwidth added to the network. They were sharing bandwidth from existing LTE channels with 5G. So T-Mobile was putting 5 or 10 megahertz of low band, which isn't even massive MIMO gear anyways on the tower sites. So you, you, it was just for a 5G icon. That's what T-Mobile did. Verizon and AT&T, the same issue, did not have new bandwidth to put on air. So they literally tuned the radios to broadcast 5G and NR with the same bandwidth that was being shared for LTE. And they were either doing it with 850 megahertz, the band 5 and N5. They would DSS or dynamic spectrum share. The, the channel bandwidth would move between LTE and 5G. What did it do for performance? Nothing. It's not massive MIMO gear, radio gear on the tower sites. It's not new bandwidth added to the network. It was for a 5G icon. And people were pissed because people started buying 5G phones and they were sold on 5G promises. But there was no new bandwidth on air. And there was no new radios on tower sites. And there were no 10 gig fiber circuits out there yet for these sites. So we were sold on this icon and it didn't perform any better than the LTE did. In fact, sometimes worse because of the spectral inefficiencies by using DSS technologies. It was never going to be something that was going to make a big difference. It was all about an icon. So whether it was T-Mobile with skinny channel low band 5G or if it was Verizon and AT&T with dynamic spectrum sharing, the first year the launch of 5G networks was... A joke when did 5g get real 5g got real when we saw millimeter wave become a thing when verizon and a little bit of at&t started putting you know 400 megahertz of bandwidth on air 800 megahertz of bandwidth on air 10 gig fiber circuits when t-mobile started building out n41 and started putting 60 megahertz on air, 80 megahertz on air, 100 megahertz channels. Then they got more bandwidth on air. They went from the 100 megahertz channel. Now phones were doing two channel aggregation with 5G. So they were doing a low band and a mid band. Then the three channel aggregation capability came out and they started doing low band and then two mid bands, right? They started doing N25. It got real because you added bandwidth. It wasn't about an icon. It was about bandwidth. Your, your, your channel bandwidth was getting aggregated and moving from LT to NR 
and it was new bandwidth. So it was like this, and, and, and fiber circuits got higher capacity and towers got, the tower grid got denser. It was all of this. It had nothing to do with the icon. See, everybody thinks, you know, this, this, this icon means that I'm going to have a good quality connection. There's no guarantee of that. What has the carrier done to the tower sites? Have they upgraded the fiber circuits? Have they installed new radios? Do they have more frequencies on air? Is it fully modernized? Did they put backup power so that the cell site keeps running when the power goes out? Like, there's all these things that come into the network, but at the end of the day, it's like bullets in war. You need the bullets. You need the ammunition. You need the artillery. That's what spectrum is. That's what bandwidth is. DSS was just a stupid little trick to get a 5G icon on your phone so you felt like you were a part of the movement. So you didn't feel left out. But there was a while before the C-band started to scale, before the N41 started to scale, there was a time where the literally the DSS was, was 5G. And it was awful. And it was bad. And it was disappointing. 2019 was a bad year for networking. It was full of promises and disappointment. But how about now? Where are we now with networks? How do we look back at DSS and how do we look at things now? Well, now we're in good shape. Now we've got a bunch of new bandwidth on air. Verizon has 140 megahertz of N77 in my market. AT&T has 120. T-Mobile has 180 megahertz of N41 in my market. They've got 20 megahertz of N25. They've got 10 or 15 megahertz of N71. Now there's bandwidth. We don't need dynamic spectrum sharing anymore. We don't need LTE and 5G bandwidth being shared. You don't, right? But we needed a spectrum auction. And then T-Mobile, in their case, they needed Sprint in order to do this. Because Lord knows, it, you know, T-Mobile is not going to get much C-band out of the auction if they didn't get the T-Mobile and Sprint merger, right? So I want to say good riddance to 5G DSS. Uh, it was all about an icon. It was makeup and lipstick on a pig. It, it brought no new, new capabilities. It brought no advanced features. It brought no new spectrum, you know, to the table. It didn't enhance anyone's experience. You know, one might argue that maybe their latency improved slightly while dynamic spectrum sharing was going on. Maybe your latency improved by 10%, but that's negligible and you wouldn't even feel it. It's measured in milliseconds. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, it wasn't going to make a difference. But the future is bright. You know, now that this has happened, we got more spectrum coming. There's more auctions coming. You know, carriers are spending money to upgrade radio gear. We don't need DSS. Uh, apparently, we needed it for marketing purposes. But you don't need it anymore. And we're happy about that. And as long as the carriers continue to densify, upgrade fiber circuits, install more radios, and get more channel bandwidth, the future is bright for networks. Good riddance. All right, this one caught me off guard. I saw this one in my Google News feed. All right, this was a thing. Uh, there was an intentional fiber cut, AT&T wires, that caused massive flight delays at Sacramento International Airport, according to the sheriff. Uh, the story is from KCRA Channel 3 on their website. An internet outage that caused... Massive delays, some hours long for flights at Sacramento International Airport. AT&T wires were intentionally cut, according to officials. Sergeant Amar Gandhi, spokesperson for the county sheriff's office, said wires were deliberately cut at Bayou Way and Powerline Road, causing the outages that affected flights from Southwest Delta Airlines. The utility pole is roughly two miles away from Terminal B. Uh, the contra uh, there was a contract security at the airport. They noticed a service disruption at 1.30 a.m. Once crews arrived at the affected utility pole, they realized lines were deliberately cut. What the hell are they doing, man? When asked if there's a possibility that the lines may have been accidentally cut, Gandhi reaffirmed the intentional nature of the crime. 
Okay, so for anybody that was thinking that maybe this was an accident, does not seem to be the case. All right. It looks like someone who knew what they were doing. This wasn't just a couple of teenagers ripping some wires out as a prank. It looks very deliberate, like they knew what they were doing. Investigators are confident they'll find the persons involved. Gandhi explained that any airport in this country is one of the most heavily surveyed surveilled areas possible. Those responsible could face at least felony vandalism charges, but because the FBI is also investigating, Gandhi said additional charges would arise depending on the motive. So if it, if it turns out to be a prank or something, then I guess they go easier on them. Um, lights. Uh, here's a statement from AT&T. We've restored internet and wireless service to affected customers in the Sacramento International Airport area following a fiber cut, which appears to be an act of vandalism or attempt at theft. We appreciate the patience of our customers as we worked to make repairs as quickly as possible. So uh, possibly AT&T is the ILEC there and they got things uh, fixed. So that's good. Um, I don't know, man. I wouldn't recommend doing stuff like this, people. Don't mess with airports. <laughs> I don't know. You know, the the thing about these these incidents is they happen at the most inopportune time, like when you're there. <laughs> so it probably sucks. People were disconnected. Airport needs a backup from a fixed wireless access provider. I know a fixed wireless access provider. Speed test channel. They could use, you know. <laughs> Hashtag plug your business. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. This is sad news, man. AT&T with the nasty work. And this impacts me. So I get to share with you guys what I plan on doing. Uh, the story is from tech.co. AT&T offers all customers free security bundle after data breach. Not happy about this. Not happy at all. All right, AT&T has been occasionally keen to downplay the severity of the recent data breach it suffered. Yet at the same time, the U.S. telecom giant has now moved to appease concerned customers with a handful of new security perks. All right, after the AT&T data breach, the company is announcing that all affected users can now benefit from various security and identify identity protection freebies, including a free identity theft insurance policy with up to 1 million worth of coverage, which would seem to suggest it's starting to take the data breach pretty seriously. Following the 73 million person data breach, the new safeguards are available to those customers. So you get the $1 million identity protection insurance, one year of complimentary credit monitoring, identity theft detection, and resolution services as well. So all that comes with it. 71 million customers impacted by this breach. Uh, there was a time where I think AT&T claimed it was only 50. Looks like it was more. Uh, just to give you guys a heads up, I don't have an account with AT&T for wireless service. I have AT&T for wireline. I got my services a couple of years ago. So that means this hack impacted customers that have been with AT&T since 2022. Some people were telling me, and I think Max, you mentioned this. People that have closed accounts and left AT&T as long back as like five years ago, right? What should AT&T customers do today? Uh, you definitely want to freeze your credit. You definitely want to take advantage of these credit monitoring systems that AT&T is giving you. And uh, you should tell AT&T to go to hell. Um, I think that would be the best course of action. So take advantage of all those freebies and those perks. And uh, AT&T. I think, I think I agree with the speed test channel. Thank you for the super chat, man. He said egregious jerks for denying it for so long. Class actions deserved. Agreed. They denied it. 
they said no we didn't have any hack we don't we don't know of any hack not not that we understand that you know there have been no indications of such either they were lying or they didn't know what was going on with their business i like to think that they were lying but that's me i that's how i that's how i view carriers you know i just assume they're lying so what am I doing? What are you doing if you're impacted by this breach? Freeze your credit. Monitor your credit. Take advantage. Enable those tools. Shout out to S Blue Tech. Thank you for the super chat. Big salute to my brother S Blue Tech. Santiago's in the house. Yeah, man. Um, I know you're coming in late, but I'm just kind of going in about at and I'm impacted by that breach. So that's that's a fiber customer. Wireless customers are impacted too. Everybody got hit by this. I'm telling you, man, these hacks, they're happening a lot. All right, we are cooking with gas here. We're like 55 minutes in. The stream's been going. We don't have too much to cover, and I think we're done with the show. We're almost there. Verizon's newest exclusive streaming deal offers six months of the Disney bundle on us. You guys remember this? You remember back when Verizon used to give you all this free stuff? They're back. <laughs> Let's see how they structure this. New and existing Verizon mobile customers can save nearly 115 bucks on their favorite streaming services like Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus that they can can't get anywhere else when switching to select plans. All right, let's take a look at this bundle. The Disney bundle, those three things, Hulu, Disney Plus, ESPN Plus. All right, so streaming Lovers rejoice. Starting April 18th, which is today, the time of this broadcast, new and existing customers who get on the My Plan can unlock more savings. Six months of the Disney Bundle My Plan perk. Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN Plus, and the select and limited plans are going to be the My Plan options. No other carrier provides customers with the six month on us offer. All right, so this says customers save nearly 115 bucks off the retail prices of each of the services. It says after the six months, you'll pay $10 per month for the Disney bundle perk. I'm not sure what those, those services are, what their cost is like standard, but this is probably a lot less. So you get six months free and then you pay probably half of what you would normally pay for the service. So that's that's a pretty good deal. If you guys remember, these were the perks that were actually available on the old Verizon plans. Do more, get more, play more, if you guys remember those. So, and and this is what I said before. I said this on a on a podcast months ago, long time ago, when I think it was the second quarter that my plan was out and they weren't, they were still having losses at Verizon. In order to make the My Plan take off, they had to run special promotions to let people know this is what My Plan is. You know, hey, thanks, B Test Channel. Appreciate you, man. So to me, this is them kind of doing what I was suggesting, getting people in on the promotion, and then giving them a solid discount even after the fact. You see what I'm saying? But now they know like what the Verizon My Plan is. Now they know what comes with it. Now they know of its existence. Now they know what Verizon puts together. And of course, every single streaming service has had price increases across the board for the last couple of years. I mean, hell, Disney Plus has gone up a couple of times. I know ESPN Plus has gone up. Hulu's gone up a few times as well. So... You know, you're not getting these things for free anymore. So getting them in on six months, running that that promotion, and then giving customers a discount, I think this is right on point. I think this is good. I think I think Hans and Sampath and those guys put this together carefully, thoughtfully, wanted to promote and really get the my plan in front of the customer. I think this is a good job. I think it's how you do it. So they're promotionally active. They're looking to grow. They want to grow through my plan, and I think this is smart. I think this is how you do it. You got a promotional period and then you get the customer in. They like the services. They keep the services. They start paying for the services. I dig it. I know a lot of people are calling for Verizon to be more promotionally active. Here you go. Do business. 
All right, a uh, bit of an update to the the SIM swapping news we got out of T-Mobile a few days ago. Uh, there were reports that there were text messages going out to T-Mobile employees, and scammers were basically trying to do SIM swap attacks to T-Mobile customers. And I covered that, and you know, they're you know how scammers are they'll try anything. But apparently, it's not just T-Mobile, but also we have confirmation. Verizon employees have been getting these text messages too. Look, I don't think there's going to be a day where there isn't some kind of a scam happening at Telco. Whether it's social engineering, the internal systems with employees, or it's something that's happening in the retail stores, or it's something that's happening in warehouses with inventory, or it's stuff like this. There's always going to be scams. There's always going to be people running game. There's always people that are thieves. You know, and... I don't know what could be done to pre prevent this. Uh, I hope you never, ever have to deal with getting your SIM swapped out of your phone and losing your number and your lines and all that. Uh, but when you got stuff like this, this type of nasty work, that risk is always there. All you can really do is, you know, keep your passwords updated, you know, have security keys and all those types of things. Just have all those, you know, like Verizon does a SIM lock tool like where they can't like nobody can do anything with your sim except you i think that's pretty cool um i don't know about the t-mobile systems with 2fa maybe i don't know you know but this goes to show you it's it wasn't even just t-mobile it was verizon employees too you know getting these offers getting text messages from scammers to do this, this is crazy so uh the only thing is i don't see anything from AT&T mentioned so so far just T-Mobile and Verizon mentioned all right last story and this will round out the show what up Dan let me get me out of the way here tell you guys what's going on do do okay Delta Airlines selects T-Mobile as their preferred mobility partner this was dated today April 18th at the time of this broadcast all right, leading global airline is going to take operations and customer experiences to even higher altitudes with 5G. All right, Delta Airlines has announced it has named T-Mobile as its preferred mobility partner, uniting America's most awarded airline with America's most awarded 5G network. Over the span of this long-term agreement, Delta will move more than 60,000 lines to T-Mobile and deploy a T-Mobile 5G hybrid network at their Atlanta headquarters to strengthen operational efficiency and enhance customer service. All right, so they got a whole press release here from Delta. Delta is consistently recognized for excellence in everything from customer experience to operational performance. It's all because Delta continually pushes the limits to enhance the travel experience for its millions of customers. By leveraging the nation's largest, fastest 5G network, Delta aims to improve operations across nearly every part of the journey, from check-in and, and boarding to departure, arrival, baggage, handling, and beyond. Through this partnership, Delta will accelerate its efforts to enhance connectivity across several of its frontline teams using 5G smartphones, tablets, ruggedized devices, ultimately taking the customer experience to higher altitudes. So T-Mobile's going to be providing the network uh t-mobile will be selling them smartphones tablets ruggedized devices that's cool um hey shout out to kind of thank you man for the super chat yeah we covered that earlier in the show um t-mobile is going to have the assurance coverage and uh they're going to have options for the metro by t-mobile folks and uh yeah so they got they got ways to keep people connected thanks for the super chat bud thank you All right, many of Delta's flight attendants, airport customer service agents, and ground crews will use super fast 5G speeds to facilitate above wing and below wing activities such as pre flight, post flight procedures, aircraft servicing, catering, baggage handling, maintenance, and more. Once implemented, pilots will experience improved connectivity to existing digital tools, resources globally, such as electronic flight bags containing weather information dispatch services delta sky club ambassadors will gain advantages from 5g connectivity 
and communications with above wing staff for better service delivery and customer satisfaction the dedicated 5g hybrid network from t-mobile's 5g advanced network solutions will boost ultra capacity 5g performance for corporate employees at delta headquarters in atlanta wow so they're doing a lot this is not uh, a cheap investment so here's what they're doing guys here's what t-mobile is doing t-mobile is basically saying delta let's talk partnership we are going to upgrade all of the facilities in which you do business so grounds crews flight attendants all their employees getting access to the network through their lines but all the things that are happening on premise for the airlines to operate properly t-mobile just bagged a huge deal this is actually pretty damn big these are accounts that verizon typically bags t-mobile got this what do you think t-mobile had to do to get this t-mobile probably had to beat everybody on price let's be honest t-mobile as a brand doesn't have the cachet of the most reliable networking but it has improved over time so people's perceptions of T-Mobile has likely improved over the last half decade, especially over the last two, three years, as T-Mobile has really driven home the point. 5G network, biggest, fastest, most reliable, right? T-Mobile has shown improvements in networking metrics across the board, whether it's open signal, Ookla, or root metrics, they have improved. So if Delta felt confident in the direction of the T-Mobile network and T-Mobile making commitments to upgrade the network upgrade you know the devices for the company at delta advanced hybrid network solutions they're they're basically saying trust us to deliver all the things you need for all of your employees in your business to be connected to the highest order this was a relationship that previously verizon would be getting t-mobile got it I think it's about time that some people come around to the idea that maybe T-Mobile has come to the point where they have to be taken seriously. I think we've gotten to that point. They're not perfect. I'm very critical of T-Mobile when it comes to certain things that they do that makes them look, you know, new to the game. It makes them look less seasoned, less veteran-esque. But when they when they snag stuff like this, these deals, this is a feather in the cap. And this is just one deal. If they can get Delta, then why can't they get other businesses? Delta's a big company. I mean, look at the market cap of Delta. Look at their position within their industry. That's a big company. It's about time, I think, some people understood and opened up their mind to a world where T-Mobile is a business competitor. It's not just Verizon's game anymore. You know, and an AT&T's in play too, you know, but really, you know, when you think of these deals, you think of Verizon. But now T-Mobile's in play. And yes, no doubt T-Mobile had to come in with the best pricing. T-Mobile definitely had the best pricing. That's how they got this. But they still have to build the network. They're still going to have to build DAS systems. They're still going to have to put access points. They're still going to have to put together all the plans for the gear. They have to do all those things. And I'm not saying it's going to be perfect. There's going to be growing pains. T-Mobile's technically new to this. But this is a step in the right direction for them as a corporation, as a business. And especially for that segment. You know, the the business CEO, I think her name is Callie Field. This is huge for her. This is huge for the company. For the most part, you know, T-Mobile's been a consumer-facing carrier, but now they're starting to get business deals. This one deal is not the end-all, be-all. It doesn't mean that T-Mobile's all of a sudden taken all this market share in business. It means that they can get this deal, which means they can get another one, and they can likely get other ones like this. 
That's what I'm saying. Uh, Kenneth, big salute to you. Thank you for the super chats tonight. He said, have a great night, band. Appreciate you, man. Good night to you. Anwar, what's up, brother? Good to see you, man. It's been a while. Guess no one, no companies care about cybersecurity. I don't know, man. I Maybe the business solutions for cybersecurity are better. Maybe they're giving, you know, Delta confidence in that. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe those were some of the questions that Delta had for T-Mobile and T-Mobile is able to prove and kind of explain what their, their process is on that moving forward. Because that's really what businesses care about. They care about uptime, reliability, dependability. You know, they, they always want it to work. They don't want downtime. It's, these connections are non-negotiable. So like if Delta Airlines was previously using Verizon for the solutions, that means T-Mobile has to come in and be as good or better. So if they're cheaper, they can be as good. And you would say, well, you know, we're saving money and it's basically the same. Or maybe they come in and do something better. I mean, that's going to be hard to do because Verizon has always been the business king, uh, enterprise and business solution. So that's a, those are big shoes to fill. Looks like T-Mobile's up for the challenge. So no Ricky. I didn't fall on my head. I think it's time. And I think you included, Ricky. Open your mind to this possibility that maybe T-Mobile is here. The brand has arrived. The business has arrived. The corporation has arrived. And they're to be taken seriously on these types of things. Another super chat for Anwad. Historically... Hasn't T-Mobile placed worse than Verizon, though? Yeah, but, you know, they're they're doing business-grade solutions with this relationship, so maybe that's different than their commercial network for consumers. Preemption, priority, dedicated solutions, maybe, maybe it is something legitimate. But trust me, T-Mobile is here. They really are. Uh, let's wrap up the show here. Max says, speaking of more chicken, I sent a folder with about five fire designs. If you want to vote on them, get the people's thoughts. I will do that. Uh, Josh says, T-Mobile voiceover NR works, but Samsung phones got issues using it unless you force NRSA only. Shout out to Green for popping in here at the end. Shout out to the homie Dan 5G Tech. That's awesome, man. Glad you guys could make it here. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the show, and I know some of you were just popping in late. Uh, but that's it, man. It was good. It was good to have you guys here to be a part of this broadcast. Hey, if it is your first time here, YouTube sent you a recommend. Put me into your feed. And you enjoyed the show or you want to see more content from the SMT. Uh, if you're new, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you nothing to subscribe and watch some videos. We welcome you to the community. Shout out to the nation. And if you really like the content and you want to level up and get more access to the SMT and the content we produce, we do more live streams and have exclusive videos. We give early access and different benefits and perks through our Patreon page. Support us there on Patreon. Uh, it's a way for you to directly support your favorite creators and get additional access to content and other goodies. The link for that will be in the description. You could also get a membership here on the YouTube side. That's always good. <laughs> Shout out to all the members and the patrons. You guys are the reason why the content on this channel continues to be industry leading. Uh, hit me with your favorite hashtag. Hashtag Mod Squad. Hashtag 2 Live Crew. Hashtag Replay Crew. Hashtag Ravioli Gang. Hashtag uh, Marcelo. Hashtag <laughs> that one's from Max. Hashtag We're Not Gonna Make It. He knows. Anyways, thank you guys. Big shout out to the YouTube members and patrons. You guys are the goats. Thank you for this great broadcast, and we will see you all on the next one.